advanced U.S. Army and Navy headquarters, forward area Guam, Admiral Chester W. Nimitz and his staff plan naval operations in support of 10th Army invasion of Okinawa Island, 335 miles from the Japanese mainland. Vice Admiral Mark A. Mitcher, commander of Task Force 58, arrives at his flagship off Leyte, Philippine Islands, starting point of the fleet's move against Okinawa. The huge convoy includes battleships, cruisers, destroyers, aircraft carriers, and rocket ships. Lieutenant General Buckner, Vice Admiral Turner, and Marine General Smith map the attack. First objective is seizure of the Karama group of islands 17 miles from Okinawa's west coast. Amphibious forces secure eight of these islands within 50 hours of the initial attack. Powerful units of the fleet support amphibious landing operations. General Buckner, commander of the new U.S. 10th Army, observes the naval bombardment. Initial landings in the Karama Group are made 26th March. of the U.S. 77th Division, commanded by Major General Andrew D. Bruce, quickly established beachheads as Jap garrisons take to the hills or are wiped out by naval shelling. <laughs> 331 Japanese troops are killed in the Karamas fighting, while another 140 are estimated to be sealed up in caves. Captured Japanese civilians, this is the first time our troops have encountered enemy non-combatants in large numbers. Naval shelling softens up Jap positions on Aka Island in an early phase of the invasion while landing craft move on the shore. No organized Jap resistance is encountered in the operation as enemy troops retreat into the hills. Infantry and armored units of the 3rd Battalion, 305th Regimental Combat Team are in immediate control of the beach. A 75 millimeter howitzer mounted on an Amtrak shells enemy caves. Infantry troops move inland. Some guerrilla fighting followed the landing, but opposition was wiped out by the 28th, and by the next day, all the islands were secured. A 3rd Battalion patrol and demolition squad destroys several hidden Jap suicide boats with thermit bombs. More than 71 of these boats were discovered and destroyed in caves along the shore. The boats are powered by six-cylinder automobile engines and contain two 50-pound drums of picric acid. Designed for suicide ramming of warships, either bow or stern contact releases their explosives. A Japanese interpreter of the 3rd Battalion tells a Korean prisoner to contact Jap civilians hiding from U.S. forces and ask their surrender. Carrying a white flag of truce, the Korean goes up into the hills to persuade the Japanese to give themselves up. Many Japanese voluntarily come down from the hills. Those who surrendered expressed amazement and gratitude when given U.S. medical treatment and food. Questioning a Jap second lieutenant, commander of a platoon wiped out by naval gunfire. Most enemy casualties occurred during our naval bombardment. Another island of the Karama Group. Troops of a single battalion hit the beach of Hojaki Island at 0920, 26th March. No military or civilian resistance is encountered. At 11.30, the American flag flies over the captured island. On board ship, 
Troops are briefed for the invasion of Tokashiki Island, largest of the Karama group. Troop carrying AM tracks and AM tanks strike at the beach of Tokashiki Island, 26th March. Its two cities, Awara and Tokashiki, are quickly seen. Awara is shelled prior to its capture by infantry. Two companies move up trails leading into Awara. Brush along the trails is burnt and destroyed by rocket fire. Japanese houses leveled by five-inch Navy shells. An observation post on a hill overlooking Tokashiki Beach. Elements of one battalion bivouacked on this hill then moved out at 0730 27th March for an attack on the town of Tokashiki. Tokashiki under fire from guns emplaced on the nearby island of Garuma, which fell 26th March. Tokashiki is secured 27th March. Resistance was light and civilians engaged in mass suicide attempts. On 1st April, six days after the initial landings on the Karama Islands, troops of the U.S. 10th Army invade the southwest coast of Okinawa. The attack is preceded by nine days of intense shelling and bombing by the 5th Fleet. Rocket ships aid in the preliminary softening up bombardment. More than 4,500 tons of shells and rockets are hurled on Okinawa prior to the landings, and every known coastal gun in the beachhead area is destroyed before our troops go ashore. inland installations, troops go in. The Marine 3rd Amphibious Corps and the 24th Army Corps make simultaneous landings. The original beachhead is approximately eight miles long. Enemy resistance is unexpectedly light, many Jap troops and a large part of the civilian population having retreated to the hills. The Jap garrison, it later appeared, was concentrated well to the south of our landing points. Some of our equipment is bogged down on the beach. The shoreline is marked by reefs, shoals, and soft stretches of coral sand. An Amtrak aids in salvaging a radio weasel stuck in the sand at Orange Beach. LCTs come in with additional troops and equipment. Unloading of supplies continues at a rapid pace during the first day of the invasion. Medium tanks and amphibious tractors pack the beach. Tanks push inland on Okinawa over the island's improved road system. By noon of the 1st, Yontan and Katena airfields less than 20 miles north of the capital city of Naha are seized. Within 48 hours after the landing, our troops drive across to the island's east coast, splitting the Japanese defenders. Our ships are attacked by scores of Jap planes. Over 100 enemy aircraft are destroyed.
Some damage is inflicted on our ships by the Jap aircraft. An enemy plane brought down by anti-aircraft fire crashed into this rocket ship. Rockets stored in the hold were not exploded by the hit and the vessel remained afloat. Center LCAs at Chowkpoo Rumry Island for a move up streams and bayous of the nearby Burma coast. Objective is to cut the main Tonguese Arakan Road and block the last Jap escape route north of the Tongoop area. The River Armada, largest ever employed in this type of operation, consists of Royal Navy destroyers, sloops, and landing craft of the Royal Indian Navy. An umbrella of thunderbolts of the RAF, AAF, and Indian Air Force afford air protection for the amphibious attack. Destroyer escorts shell Jap inland positions. Little enemy opposition is encountered during the 34-mile trip up the coast, and snipers along the shore are quickly wiped out. Landing near the village of Pien Wan is unopposed by the Japanese, who withdraw from the coastal area to take up new defensive positions guarding the approaches to the Tonggup and On passes. Sharply pointed bamboo sticks projecting from the ground and scattered along the river bank form part of ineffectual Jap defenses in the area. In the three weeks campaign that followed the landing, British units reach and enter Tonggup. 34 miles south of Letpan, and 130 miles southeast of Akyab. This operation severed enemy communications and gave Allied units a hold on the all-weather 110-mile Tonggup Prome Road leading into the Irrawaddy Valley. Additional films on the capture of Mandalay. Thunderbolts and RAF hurry bombers strike at Japs entrenched in the strongly fortified walls of Fort Dufferin. The fort successfully withstands a 12-day siege. observation post on nearby Mandalay Hill, officers watch the progress of the siege. Six-inch howitzers pound the north wall. RAF and AAF officers, including Major General T.W. Reese, commander of the 19th Division, meet near a racetrack grandstand about 700 yards north of Fort Dufferin. From a pagoda on top of Mandalay Hill, the officers inspect enemy emplacements. B-25s of the 10th U.S. Air Force are brought in with 2,000-pound delayed-action bombs. Coming in at low level, the B-25s blast holes in the walls, opening up the way for tanks and infantry. Occupation of the fort is accomplished, 20th March. Shortly after the capture of Mandalay, Lord Louis Mountbatten, accompanied by Air Marshal Sir Keith Park and Major General H.H. H. Fuller, arrives on an inspection tour of the city. He's met by General Reese and his staff. Supreme Allied Commander visits forward installations in Mandalay. Lord Mountbatten and his party drive to Fort Dufferin. They pass through an opening in the 30-foot thick wall. Inside Fort Dufferin, the mile square moated fortress dominated the entire city. Its ancient palace was destroyed by the Japs. 
The Supreme Allied Commander inspects Jap equipment captured when the fort fell to the Allies. Although the fort was not defended with heavy artillery pieces, its excellent strategic position, impenetrable walls, and the moat surrounding it made the emplacement one of the most stubbornly defended areas in the Burma campaign. The top of the wall equals the width of a city street. Inspecting a bomb crater in the wall, blasted by one of our 2,000-pound demolition bombs. Dead Japs in a gateway. Although ordered to defend the fort with suicidal resistance, many Japs escaped under cover of darkness. <laughs> Air Force films of the Army's newest fighting plane, the jet-propelled P-80 Shooting Star. Having no propeller, radiator, cooling system, superchargers, carburetor, or complex controls, the P-80 is easy to build, service, and repair. is believed to be the fastest fighter in existence. The secret of its spectacular speed lies in the new knife-edged wing and its powerful kerosene-burning jet engine. The P-80 operates at high altitudes with long range and at high speed. Trucks for the 5th Army leaving an outdoor motor and vehicle park. American ordnance equipment for the Italian theater is collected in a pool which stretches for two miles along highway number one. Over 20,000 pieces of equipment, from the latest models of light and medium tanks to new jeeps and other rolling stock are serviced and checked here. They are brought in directly from Leghorn to this point, about midway between Leghorn and Pisa. Standard and modified M4 tanks with both the 75 and 76 millimeter guns. Aerial views show the full extent of the park, which is operated by some nine different ordnance and service organizations. This equipment is earmarked for a front moving with accelerated activity since the end of the Italian winter. Lieutenant General Lucian K. Truscott's 5th Army troops are driving for the naval base of La Spezia and the Po Valley Bastion of Bologna. The new campaign follows up Adriatic coastal blows by the British 8th Army on the other side of the Italian peninsula. Battle for Frankfurt on the Main. Elements of the 6th Armored Division approach the one remaining bridge into Germany's ninth largest city. Weakened by repeated shellings, the span is impassable for heavy armor. The 3rd Army tanks hold the bridge approach while infantry troops try to get across. Facing them is small arms fire and bazookas along with an artillery barrage from enemy points along the Main River. are forced back as the shelling continues unabated for six hours. Awaiting the signal for another attempt at a crossing, they again approach the damaged bridge in single file and then dash across, still under withering enemy fire. bombed out Frankfurt. Fifth Infantry troops move up to clean out snipers within the city, which was defended by Volkssturmers and SS units. Frankfurt is cleared by 29th March. 
Ten miles southeast of the fallen Rhine bastion of Mannheim, 7th Army forces speed down the superhighway toward Heidelberg. German demolitions have destroyed all bridges over the Neckar River into the ancient German university city. Infantry support rafts transport men and vehicles. The 10th Armored and 63rd Infantry Divisions capture Heidelberg, 30th March. Unlike German cities of similar size, Heidelberg is virtually unscathed. All newer parts of the city north of the Neckar are almost unmarked. Reports on the old town south of the river indicate only light damage. Liberated Frenchmen celebrate in the streets of Heidelberg. To the northeast, General Patch's 45th Infantry Division received 12th Tactical Air Command support in the attack on Aschaffenburg. This town was reported cleared when the 3rd Army rolled through late in March, but a new fanatical stand is made by the Nazis. Bombs start huge fires. Schaffenberg finally is taken on 3rd April. Another 7th Army Division, the 12th Armored, is driving across the Bavarian Plain in the vicinity of Würzburg. This attack on 31st March is against the town of Nasik, just below the Keen Mine River city. An estimated 250 Nazis are holding out in the town. All are reported to be youthful soldiers, 16 to 18 years old. One hour is allowed them to come out and surrender. Ninety-five Germans give themselves up. Interrogation reveals that these troops had only 15 days training, but their marksmanship is attested by reports from men of the 12th Armored. The battle continues against fanatical defenders remaining inside Nazi. With the support of the tank elements, the town is entered by Negro units of the 43rd Armored Infantry Battalion. The little town is afire as it falls to Major General Roderick Allen's troops. On the First Army front, German shells burst over the city of Limburg, 22 miles east of Koblenz. A major rail and highway terminus the city is entered by the 9th Armored Division with a crossing of the Lahn River. This climax is a dawn to late afternoon drive, 26th March, in which the 9th swept down the Cologne-Frankfurt Superhighway to reach Limbourg. Among the prisoners taken in the town are those wearing the Volkssturm armband. Limbourg had a normal population of 12,000. The Autobahn in this area is used as an airstrip by liaison pilots of the field artillery. Normal traffic is not interfered with. In addition to the main upper section of the superhighway, American motorized equipment moves toward the front along the underpass. Employing the largest concentrations of armor in First Army operations, General Hodges' far-ranging columns spread out eastward on express highways, once the pride of Hitler Germany. In an Allied plan to isolate the Ruhr, the 3rd Armored Division swings north for a junction with 9th Army troops. Moving at great speed, the 3rd Armored spearheads toward Potterborn, 100 miles northeast of Cologne. The 104th Infantry Division, under Major General Terry Allen, also participates in this action. The commander of the 3rd Armored, Major General Maurice Rose, is killed near Potterborn on 30th March. and hills south of Potterborn are cleared before the town is entered. The attack on Gießen, just west of the Autobahn, which runs from Frankfurt to Leipzig, 
The 7th Armored Division takes the town. It is in this area that 1,200 American, English, Russian, and Polish prisoners of war are liberated on 28th March. Originally held at Limburg, they were being moved back when our troops cut off their captors. Wetzlar, Germany. Further extending its hold on the Lahn River, the 7th Armored enters this city adjacent to Gießen on 29th March. Major General Robert Hasbrook's troops take many prisoners in the still burning town. 14 days in the service, this Nazi had seen only two hours of action when captured. Freed slave laborers of all nationalities leave Wetzlar. The Ernst Lights Optical Works, home of the Leica camera. Town after town is seized by the 7th Armor. Rossberg, Diekenbach, and Gontershausen, all in an area 15 miles northeast of Gießen, are taken in rapid succession. The tanks speed on past the smoke and flames. The armor moves forward at a pace that permits only preliminary clearance by motorized infantry, and later complete mopping up by infantry on foot. The 7th Armored Division advances 96 miles in five days, reducing all opposition in its path. 